हेलो गाइस गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई होप यू आर गेटिंग माय वॉइस क्लियरली Yes, guys. <clears throat> so today we'll discuss a few more questions from the 9th April morning session physics paper. So we are taking this as a part two. Part two, part one. We discuss a few questions. In part two, also we'll discuss a few questions around <clears throat> uh, just uh, nearly ten questions, nine to ten questions, or some, if possible. Little more, or if not, a little less also. And uh, as part of part three, I would like to just discuss only eleventh class or eleventh basic questions <coughs> in another part. So I don't want to make the session as a lengthy one. So as a short as possible. So few questions you can uh, go through. Maybe around forty-five uh, minutes will take the session. If stretches means maximum two. Some around 50 minutes or one hour, not more than that. <coughs> right, guys. the voice is clear just a second <coughs> Signal is as well. Signal is also very nice. So <clears throat> the first question is: In this session, a proton, an electron, and an alpha particle have the same energies. Their de Broglie wavelengths will be compared as. What happened? So I said the signal is good. Is buffering. Still, it is buffering. Right. So let us go ahead. So that their de Broglie wavelengths will be compared as the options are given. So first, what is the given condition and what you are asked to find? You have to understand first. What is given? It is given that proton, electron, and alpha particle same energies. That condition, energy condition, is given here. I will continue. Maybe this will be uh, streamed even if it is uh, uh, buffering. Once the signal is uh, okay, then it will pick up and it will uh, uh, broadcast.
right so the energies of the three particles are same what are the three particles proton electron and alpha particle the de broglie wavelengths were asked to compare so we know that we know that de broglie wavelength lambda is equal to h by p h by p and it is given by in terms of energy it's it's a kinetic energy it is given as h by square root of 2 mk where k is kinetic energy or 2 mke also you can write so where, where h is planck's constant m is mass of the particle and k is kinetic energy of the particle h is planck's constant and a uh, planck's constant anyway is a constant and uh, all particles are having same energy means same kinetic energy it is given in the question so h and k are constant 2 is a number so only variable parameter is mass m so from this we can say <coughs> lambda is proportional to 1 by root m and three particles are there so proton electron and alpha particle so proton if you compare the masses if uh, a mass of uh, a mass of proton usually will be 1837 times mass of mass of electron electron is a very light particle you know mass of electron is mass of electron is 1. Point, uh, sorry 9.1 If you if you remember this, then I don't need to spend this much time. Just directly can do the calculations for your understanding purpose. I'm giving all these details. Mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Mass of proton is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. And mass of alpha particle. Alpha particle is nothing but helium nucleus H2O4. So it is two times mass of proton. So obviously. electron is lighter particle proton is little heavier and alpha particle is much more heavier so as electron is lighter particle and uh, 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 lambda is inversely proportional to root of mass of the particle so if the denominator is less the total value will be more so you can say uh, de broglie wavelength of electron should be because its mass is the lightest one so its wavelength should be the longest one so you can say it should be greater than wavelength of proton should be greater than uh, um, you can say wavelength of alpha particle or the other way also you can uh, write it as wavelength of alpha particle should be less than wavelength of proton should be less than wavelength of electron either way you can write it based on this you have to cross check the options <coughs> okay so here uh, as per this uh, which one is correct Uh, lambda is greater than lambda p or uh, lambda of alpha less than lambda p and which is less than lambda e the fourth option is correct so accordingly you have to cross check the options right so i hope it is clear for you next one the next question is it is given that a plane electromagnetic wave is propagating along x direction a plane electromagnetic wave is propagating along x direction it has a wavelength of 4 mm if electric field is in y direction with the maximum magnitude of 60 volt per meter the equation for magnetic field is right so first note down what is given a plane electromagnetic wave is propagating along x direction means positive x direction is what you have to understand otherwise it should be mentioned specifically negative x direction okay x direction means positive x direction right so the wave wave is moving along uh, wave motion is along motion is along positive x direction right 
um, so that it has a wavelength of with the wavelength of 4 millimeter so lambda is equal to 4 millimeters means 10 to the power minus 3 meter if electric field is in y direction electric field is in what direction electric field E is in y direction is in y means positive y direction with the maximum value of means E naught is equal to 60 volt per meter 60 volt per meter then the equation for magnetic field is what is the equation uh, equation for magnetic field is the question so what is the equation for magnetic field b is the question so you should remember the equation general equation for electromagnetic wave you should remember the general equation for electromagnetic wave so what is the general equation of electromagnetic wave so you should remember that uh, so some basic points about electromagnetic wave that if an electromagnetic wave is moving along <coughs> positive x direction and it, it is given that electric field is along y direction along positive y direction and magnetic field direction is, should be such that in an electromagnetic wave electric and magnetic field should oscillate or vibrate in mutually perpendicular direction and the direction of propagation of the wave should be perpendicular to both of these if uh, electric field is along y direction and it is given that it is moving along x direction obviously the magnetic field should be along z direction that is what you have to understand right so should be a uh, magnetic field uh, should be along z direction so equation in general in general equation for magnetic field <coughs> is written as b is equal to peak value or maximum value of magnetic field into because electric and magnetic fields will vary with the time so we can represent these variable functions as sinusoidal functions b naught sin omega t minus kx you can write is a progressive wave or you can also write b is equal to b naught into sin kx minus omega t when it is moving along positive x direction a, any of these uh, I mean omega t and kx terms should have different signs if kx is negative omega t should be positive if kx is positive omega t should be negative uh, otherwise if if omega t minus k uh, plus kx or kx plus omega t if you take it means both if both are having same sign or minus omega t minus kx like that then the wave should be moving along negative x direction this you have to keep in mind as a mnemonic if uh, the wave if the direction of a particular quantity if a wave is moving along positive x direction then this omega t and kx terms should have opposite signs let's try to remember now what is b naught what is k what is omega t if you based on the options you have to simplify that is also important you have to just uh, carefully have to cross check now you have to remember few more related terms here we know uh, <coughs> the velocity is electric condition also here you have to remember according to this we have to say v is equal to e by b where velocity here is a velocity of uh, uh, any particle or a wave here the wave is electromagnetic wave it will travel with the speed of a light so you can write c is equal to e by b or e naught by b naught maximum values if you consider from this we can write as yeah what is given here a maximum value of electric field is given c is of course the speed of light in free space is constant from this we can write b naught where b naught is equal to e naught by c it is equal to e naught value is 60 c value is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second you have to remember so 3 ones 3 20s so b naught is equal to 20 into 10 to the power minus 8 or 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 it magnetic field it tesla so once you know this you have to substitute it here now based on this also one by one options you should be able to eliminate by using elimination method you can quickly you can understand so b naught value should be 2 into 10 power minus 7 here if you observe 2 into 10 power minus 7 how many options are there <coughs> b, b, b naught part first option second options are having 60 60 so these two options are not correct not correct so either a 2 or 4 next part omega t and k terms. if you have to just cross check what is k here k is equal to wave number 2 pi by lambda lambda is given right what is lambda value 4 into 10 power minus 3 so it is equal to 2 pi by 
lambda is 4 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, 2 ones, 2 twos. k is equal to pi by 2 into 10 to the power plus 3 is k value. This is B naught value. This is k value. Now, just a uh, 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 cross check. Before cross checking, just omega also we need. So, try to uh, get, get the omega, omega value also. Then you can cross check. And <coughs> here what about omega we know omega is equal to 2 pi f or 2 pi by t time period if it is known or frequency is known or in terms of uh, uh, wavelength how can you express uh, you know for frequency you don't know hmm. uh, time period you don't know then how to get it so that is another problem so 2 pi f or 2 pi by t so here you have to remember one more relation that is uh, <coughs> um, v is equal to we have to say um, f lambda f lambda s yes, or here velocity of electromagnetic wave is c can we write it as a c is equal to f lambda here lambda is given f is not given yes from this we can write f is equal to c by lambda f is equal to c by lambda so c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second SI units lambda is 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 so f is equal to 3 by 4 into 10 to the power this minus 3 if it comes it comes here then it becomes um, here uh, depending on options you have to simplify if you see the options uh, second and third options issue it may be so but in these options in omega t term uh, they have mentioned 3 to 10 power 8 terms they have mentioned but that means the speed of light they have kept as it is so here also while simplifying carefully you have to simplify you shouldn't uh, uh, simpl uh, ca cancel this you have to keep 3, point, 3 to 10 to the power 8 as it is so f is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 by 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 keep this as it is then you can write uh, omega omega is equal to 2 pi f so it is equal to 2 pi into 3 into 10 to the power 8 by 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 right so here this term we can further write uh, simplify it as 2 ones 2 twos so pi by 2 into 10 to the power 3 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 this 10 to the power 8 term keep it separately for omega now if you substitute it here as per the options if you observe then we will get b is equal to what is b naught 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 to sign uh, you see here kx minus omega t form or uh, omega t minus kx form uh, the options are in they are in kx minus omega t form and in the within the bracket they have given x minus something into t that c into t form so x only should be there inside k should be out k is nothing but pi by 2 into 10 power 3 so pi by 2 into 10 to the power 3 hmm? if you take k out that should come here down uh, into the denominator omega t by k you have to take so in that way if you take uh, uh, so you take a square bracket here the round bracket here uh, x minus omega is pi by 2 into 10 to the power 3 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 so here also pi by 2 into 10 to the power 3 is there if you take this common then you will get 3 into 10 to the power 8 into t yes this will be the answer so while simplification you have to cross check properly the given terms i hope every point is very clear step by step so try to <coughs> pause it and go through once again note down and practice yourself once again if there is any confusion again go through right next one <coughs> So the option which option is correct then uh, x minus 3 into 10 to the power 8 pi by 2 into 10 to the power 3 is there yes so second option is right next question next question
right guys <coughs> Okay, so the next question is <coughs> a capacitor is made of a flat plate <coughs> of area A and a second plate having a stair like structure as shown in figure. <coughs> this is the figure. This is the figure you can see. Okay, so this is plate A. You can uh, redraw. Mm, as shown in figure uh, let, let me complete the question if the area of each stair is a by 3 and the height is d the capacitance of the arrangement is for understanding let us redraw it let us redraw it see it is given that first plate is this and the second plate here we are having this one so with the separation of d and uh, area of this plate is a by 3 this entire thing is a so one third of this is uh, having uh, the uh, second plate of the first capacity is having one third of this total area then it is connected with another wire then a third one is having a by 3 here the same with same separation d and a th uh, again it is connected with another wire and a third plate is connected here with an area of a by 3 so this is also d so this is identical to actually this is a plate and this is a uh, kind of uh, you have to say there are three capacitors it is identical to there is this is one capacitor and this is another capacitor this is another capacitor so the first plate of all is the same Con means connected to same potential you can say all are having same area in the first for the first plates yeah 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 but the second plates are having a by 3 a by 3 a by 3 smaller plates you can uh, while drawing also you can draw like this smaller plate smaller plate and smaller plate and all these plates are connected all this pla this plate is connected to this plate and this plate is connected to this plate so they are connected uh, commonly so <clears throat> and the first plate is common for all actually that means these are also connected so this, this arrangement is identical to three capacitors of capacitances C1, C2, C3 are connected in parallel. So therefore the effective capacitance the effective capacitance is given by C effective is equal to C1 plus C2 is so in general capacitance of parallel plate capacitor is epsilon naught a by d if the medium between the plates is air medium and small d is the separation between the plates a is area of each plate if both plates are having same area in this case what you have to consider is um, for for the first capacity if this is your first this is second this is third right area uh, area of uh, a by 3 part of this you have to consider for this common area even though area of the first one is this is a by 3 this is a, a big one so this is also complete is a so only a by 3 part only you have to consider for this cap its capacitance this you have to keep in mind next it is equal to so epsilon naught a for first one a by 3 so you have to take it as a by 3 the separation between them is d right with respect to the first this plate this plate big plate <coughs> so <coughs> next uh, for the, with respect to this plate the distance of uh, the second plate is 2d d plus d 2d so its capacitance is epsilon naught a by 3 into 2d plus for the third one epsilon naught a by 3 into that this separation between them this is 3d this is 3d so into 3d this is how you have to take it to take it so this is equal to epsilon naught a by 3d is common everywhere so if, if you take this out epsilon naught a by 3d is out it, so it becomes 1 plus here epsilon naught a by 2d uh, uh, 3d out means it is 1 by 2 
plus uh, 3d out means it is 1 by 3 on simplifying this on simplifying this we will get what is this uh, uh, 6 <coughs> so we will get if you simplify this we will get uh, uh, here 2 plus 3 5 by 6 then again 6 plus 5 11 by 6 11 by 6 into 3 Yes, uh, three, uh, 6 into 3 18 so you will get 11 epsilon naught a by 18 d is the capa effective capacitance so therefore this is in general therefore c effective is equal to 11 epsilon naught a by 18 d so if, based on the options now if you cross check the options you can select 11 epsilon naught a by 18 d 11 epsilon naught a by 18 d so option one is the correct one 11 epsilon naught a by 18 d so i hope it is clear for you and there is no confusion next let us get into the next question the question is a bulb and a capacitor are connected in series across an ac supply a dielectric is then placed between the plates of a capacitor a dielectric is placed a dielectric is then placed between the plates of the capacitor the glow of the bulb options are given as remains the same increases decreases becomes zero so what happens to the glow of the bulb so this you have to understand uh, like <coughs> see <coughs> See as uh, like as in figure, there is a capacitor, parallel plate capacitor, and it is connected in series with an AC source. This is connected in series with yes, this is connected in series across an AC supply. A bulb is connected. A bulb and a capacitor. So a, a capacitor here and a bulb here. Either way, you can take it. A bulb, a capacitor, parallel plate capacitor are connected to an AC source. An AC source. So usually a bulb will have a coil and that will have a resistance also and we will consider usually while uh, discussing the bulb problems uh, a re a resistance rating power rating voltage rating of the bulbs we used to consider but here we need to worry about all those things. So a bulb will have some resistance capacitor will have some capacitance. Now it is glowing so usually it is glowing means like some current is flowing through this some current is flowing through in either anti clockwise or clockwise whatever in whatever may be the direction so it, it, uh, it when current i is uh, flowing it glows now when a dielectric is introduced between this plates of the capacitor what happens to the glow of the bulb the capacitor is is this and here one dielectric is introduced this is a dielectric slab is introduced and it is connected to the same AC source. So a source is having some potential AC voltage V and it is having resistance R. Then what happens to the glow of the bulb? So when the current I is flowing, usually capacitor allows AC current only. If you connect to DC supply, it will block. So no current will be there. Uh, capacitor acts or capacitor blocks DC. So it will not allow any current. So the circuit will act as open circuit. Bulb will not glow at all. If it is connected to DC source or battery, if it connected if if capacitor is connected to ac source then only it will allow the current now <coughs> as i to understand this we have to consider this expression as i is equal to v by r effective or in case of ac ac circuits we have to take it as r effective as impedance impedance resistance term in ac circuits will be called as impedance so we have to take it as v by z where <coughs> where Z is in case of uh, a resistor and capacitor. This is a capacitor having capacitance, and uh, oppo opposing component in case of a capacitor will be called as a reactance, capacitor reactance, capacitor reactance. So it will have some capacitance. So the total impedance of the circuit because the resistor 
resistance of the bulb will act as a resistor and a capacitor are connected in series it will be taken as the square root of r square plus x c square this you have to remember so here again here again you have to say where what is x c capacitive reactance it is given as 1 by omega c this also you have to remember now earlier when just a capacitor is connected to the bulb it was glowing now if you introduce the dielectric what happens is because of introduction of dielectric the capacitance will increases the capacitance will increases so as the capacitance increases so because xc is equal to 1 by omega c the new denominator increases so denominator increases means total value of xc will decreases so xc will decreases xc decreases as xc is in z z is equal to square root of r square plus x square r will remain same but as x decreases compared to the previous here now in this case xc in this case xc dash you can also can consider you compare it to the first case in the second case due to the dielectric xc decreases means z will decreases as xc decreases that implies z decreases as z here and i is equal to v by z as z decreases in first case z is equal to simply x uh, it is uh, r square plus x c square or r square plus 1 by omega c, uh, c square but here as this entire z is decreasing total value of i will increases so this implies i increases as i so i as I increases I increases means the bulb will get more current supply as I increases the bulb will glow brighter bulb will glow brighter than brighter than earlier condition so what, what you can understand the glow of the bulb will increases bulb of the glow will increases the bulb will grow glow brighter or more brighter bulb will glow more brighter more brighter so this is how you have to understand this kind of questions right the next one is i hope it is clear for you the next question is <clears throat> we are here only 12th basic questions we are discussing in this session then the next session maybe most probably tomorrow or day after tomorrow we'll take one more session in that only 11th based questions in this particular paper 9th uh, april session part morning session paper only 11th based questions we'll discuss so now then another question is in Eng's double slit experiment the intensity at a point is see in wave optics chapter ydsc Eng's double slit experiment concept is very 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 important whatever may be the exam whether it is je or neat or any local exam any exams from wave optics usually we get a question from this or based on polarization okay brewster's law malice law this and that some are some basic concepts so based on interference of waves like that intensity are uh, related terms amplitude related terms so now <coughs> what is given let us go through the question once in a, in a Young's double slit experiment the intensity at a point is one fourth of the maximum intensity one point then the maximum distance of the point from the central maximum is dash micrometer dash micrometers lambda is given as 600 nanometers and d is given as 1 millimeter and the capital d is 1 meter so what is what you should remember from x double slit experiment everything the entire immediately if you close the eyes the entire setup of x double slit experiment should appear before your eyes then only you can do this kind of questions very easily so what is this is See, Young's double slit experiment will have, try to draw quickly the diagram of Young's double slit experiment. We have a S1, S2 slits and there is a screen. So, the uh, distance between the slits is small d and from midpoint of the slits to the screen, if we, let us draw one line and this, at that point on the screen, uh, we will mark it as o, central point and distance between the slits and screen is nothing but capital D. Now, <coughs> If the light from here and uh, here from first and second slits meet somewhere on the screen, you'll get, you'll get some fringes, uh, interference fringes. 
let us say the distance of that uh, they are meeting at some point P so that distance of that point from central fringe is uh, uh, is Y let us say the point given here is in Young's double slit experiment the intensity at a point P is one fourth of the maximum intensity to understand this a very basic point you have to remember guys so we should remember that the maximum in the resultant intensity intensity resultant intensity should be equal to 4 I naught where uh, I naught I is the intensity at the maximum uh, midpoint or central uh, central maximum intensity of the central maximum is I naught then so central uh, intensity at the central uh, central maximum is 4 I naught that is the entire thing this is maximum intensity where uh, uh, I naught is intensity of each individual wave they are equal then 4 I naught into cos square phi by 2 or delta phi by 2 also you can take phase difference phi is phase difference between these two if you draw a line here and from this point onwards both will both light waves will travel same distance this extra distance will be called as the extra path or path difference you can check delta x if this is uh, the distance between small l s1 and s2 is d then you can uh, if this angle is theta then you can write delta x is equal to d sin theta d sin theta the path difference you can call it as that also you have to make use here and you have to compare many other points so here the, the resultant intensity at a point is one fourth of it is given that one fourth of the maximum intensity maximum intensity is what 4 i naught so it is equal to 4 i naught into cos square phi or delta phi you can use the symbol delta also to represent phase difference cos square of delta phi by 2 you can just here delta uh, 4 i naught have 4 i naught get cancelled 1 by 4 equal to this is equal to cos square so if you send this square that to the um, left side then you can write cos square so cos delta phi by 2 is equal to root of 1 by 4 that is 1 by 2 so therefore delta phi by 2 is equal to cos inverse of 1 by 2 for what angle of cos will get 1 by 2 60 degrees that is pi by 3 so from this you can write delta phi phase difference delta phi is phase difference is equal to 2 pi by 3 so the phase difference of the waves meeting over there uh, at the point p which is at the distance y is 2 pi by 3 the, the question here is well, what is the minimum distance of that point from the central maximum in micrometers so for that you have to relate this phase difference at this point phase difference between the waves and path difference also so you have to here recollect back one relation between phase difference and path difference what is the relation between path difference and phase difference you know that delta x is equal, uh, sorry 2 pi by lambda into path difference that is delta x is equal to phase difference so 2 pi by lambda into path difference is equal to phase difference phase difference is delta phi or path difference is equal to lambda by 2 pi into phase difference also you can write either way okay but here path difference delta x is d sin theta but theta is no, no way related y is related so you here again I, the entire concept you have to remember delta x in this case is nothing but d sin theta for smaller angles of theta you take it as d tan theta tan theta will be taken as uh, again by symmetry you have to take a line from this place to this so if this is theta opposite side tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side that is the y by d you have to take so d y by d you have to take delta x is equal to small d y by d for understanding purpose everything i am giving you otherwise directly formula you have to use and you have to simplify so should the small d y by capital D so if you substitute this over here then you will get 2 pi by lambda into small d y by capital D is equal to delta phi is 2 pi by 3 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled in this so what you want y you want y so this implies this implies y here d y by lambda d so y is equal to lambda d by into small d will come here so all these values are given wavelength is what 600 nanometer <coughs> 600 nano means 10 to the power minus 3 meter capital D is how much 1 meter s uh, by 3 d small d is 1 millimeter so it is 1 3 into 1 millimeter 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 3 minus 3 cancel so 3 2 shall get 
wait, 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 wait. Uh, lambda is how much? 600 nanometer, right? 600 nanometer minus 9. Mm, yeah, it is 10 to the power minus 9. Calic do calculations properly 10 power minus 9 capital is 1 meter by this so 10 power minus 3 minus 3 cancels means here minus 6 will be there so here this becomes 3 into 3 ones 3 two, 200 so it is equal to 200 uh, y into 10 power minus 6 meters into 10 to the power minus 6 meters can be written as micrometers so the question is uh, the minimum distance of the point from the central maximum is dash micrometer so in micrometers we are asked to represent so y is equal to y is equal to 200 micrometer so here your answer is this only have to take 200 only so this is integer based question so i have to take 200 as the answer that's it i hope it is clear for you so try to carefully observe how we have related these parameters how can you understand we have to substitute delta x here then uh, uh, just from this formula d sin theta d tan theta d, d, this uh, entire conceptual part you have to remember okay so be perfect every uh, line or every step of the yds experiment the theory related what is that uh, interference of the waves and the related intensity related amplitude etc etc then uh, this becomes very easy sometimes if a, a block is introduced between uh, in the any one of the paths then what is the change in position this kind of questions also will be asked so any method based on ydsc you have to be perfect uh, right i hope it is clear next let us get into the next question the question here is a square loop of edge of length 2 meter a square loop of edge of length 2 meter carrying a current of carrying a current of 2 ampere is placed with its edges parallel to xy axis the, ma the magnetic field is passing through xy plane and expressed as b bar is equal to b naught into 1 plus 4 x k cap where b naught is 5 tesla b naught into 1 plus 4 x k cap and x is the x coordinate that means b is not fixed constant one it is variable when x changes b will change this then the net magnetic force net magnetic force experienced by the loop is dash newton in newtons you want everything you have to observe carefully you have to observe carefully see <coughs> the net magnetic force experienced by the loop so just for understanding purpose you can draw a small diagram of course within the given time only itself you have to just uh, draw and uh, do it if you take this is x and y plane and the loop is placed uh, a square loop is placed so that at x is equal to 0 b equal to b naught so at x is this is x axis so at x is equal to 0 and b is acting along z direction so uh, and the square uh, square is having the edge of the square are parallel to edges of square are parallel to x and y axis so one is parallel to x axis another is parallel to y axis so it is a square so the edge length is l is equal to 2 meters l l at x is equal to 0 at x equal to 0 b value you can take it as uh, or b1 b is different is equal to b naught b naught into 1 plus 0 so b naught tesla whereas at x is equal to the next edge which is at a distance of uh, 2 meters then b is different it is equal to and x is equal to 2 2 into 4 8 plus 1 9 9 b naught 9 b naught tesla so magnetic field is changing when a current of here again one more thing is given the length is given as L is equal to 2 meter and current is uh, I is equal to 2 ampere is flowing 2 ampere only yes 2 ampere is flowing in this when current of 2 ampere is flowing then in any direction you can consider of course let us say it is it mentioned specifically as shown in figure nothing is mentioned the magnetic field is passing through x-ray plane yeah right 
so in this case <coughs> what you have to just uh, understand to calculate the required parameter is the magnetic force you have to remember the expression for magnetic force on a current carrying wire in an external magnetic field there is a magnetic field a variable magnetic field in this we have kept a loop loop is having four sides so f is equal to i l b or i into l cross b bar l bar cross b bar simply you can say i l b sin theta i l b sin theta so now <coughs> For if you take this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sides. For the first side, I, L direction is nothing but the current direction. And it is mentioned that magnetic field is along a positive Z direction. So that means it is out of the plane, outward. So L cross B if you take, here the force on this conductor will be to the right, towards right. Whereas on the second, if you observe, of course this and uh, uh, b bar are perpendicular but every part of this due to this the magnetic field is in uh, the magnetic forces in this direction everywhere in this direction uh, on this it is in this direction so uh, uh, on third one to the uh, left word so i into l cross b l cross b is to the left on the fourth one it is upward provided everywhere Due to second and the fourth one, at uh, some point, midpoint, if you consider here, exactly same values in opposite directions, they will f produces the force. Okay, this the same values of forces will act in opposite directions. So these two will cancel. Only forces on the first and third phases will act. This you have to understand carefully. Observe carefully, guys. Use use uh, right hand. Uh, right hand thumb rule I into L direction will be along the current direction L cross B is outward outward means you can just cross your fingers out so on first side it will be to uh, the direction of F is towards the right you can take the force is F1 and and second and the fourth they will be in opposite directions with equal magnitude so that this one this is let us take it is F2 and here downward if it if you take uh, l l cross out is uh, if you curl the fingers like this you get the direction of b is to the left in this way you have to cross check then it is i l b b is peak value you can take it as i l b naught this is f1 whereas in general if you take it as i l b in general if you take this as i l b on the first phase you can take it as f1 is equal to i l b 1 is equal to i l b1 is nothing but b naught and then the second at the fourth third phase f2 let us take the force it is nothing but i l b2 b2 is 9 b naught so it is 9 i l b naught is the value if they are having different forces so they are equal then it will be net force will be zero but they are not equal so you can take the net force is the larger minus smaller because they are acting in opposite directions therefore net force is equal to f2 minus f1 is equal to 9 minus 1 into i l b naught yes, so it is 8 i l b naught so options the values of l and i are numerical values are given b naught is, is also given so you have to substitute and find out what is the final answer it is equal to 8 into i is 2 ampere l is 2 meter b naught is 5 tesla so 2 into 2 4 4 fives 20 so into 2 160 it is equal to 160 is the force so unit of force is Newton therefore net force is net force is 160 Newton so try to calculate the parameters carefully so that is your answer that's it I hope every point is clear we can go through once again next question next question let us uh, discuss this so second year base uh, 12th basic questions are uh, this many already in the first session we have discussed a few more uh, 12th basic questions so uh, with this the 12th basic questions are finished 
in the next session uh, remaining questions uh, which are uh, specifically 11th based questions we'll discuss in the next next session so in this question what is given and what you are asked to find let us see it is given that uh, one more thing guys i don't want millions of millions of students to watch so at least one student get benefited means i'll be happy i don't worry if hundreds or thousands or millions are not watching only hands full of students are watching uh, there is not a problem at least if it is uh, going to helpful for at least one student it is a, a great pleasure for me as a mentor right so the next question is when a coil is connected across a 20 volt dc supply when a coil is connected across a 20 volt dc supply coil coil means inductor i have to take it as inductor when a coil is connected across 20 volt dc supply it draws a current of 5 ampere it draws a current of you can say first case i1 is equal to 5 ampere right when it is connected across 20 volt 50 hertz ac supply the same coil is connected to the ac supply having 20 volt and 50 hertz for ac supply frequency frequency will be there for dc there will be no frequency it is not variable for a fixed one so that is why frequency is not given for dc so 20 volt 50 hertz ac supply it draws a current of it draws a current of 4 ampere let us take it as i2 is equal to 4 ampere now the self inductance of the coil is the coil will have some self inductance self inductance of the coil is a dash milli ampere so we have to get in milli ampere only the value which you are getting that will be your answer this is also numerical based question take pi is equal to 3 that is also you have to keep in mind so you have to take this as a two step process in first step process as it is uh, <coughs> going through here what you are asked to find self inductance uh, self inductance of a coil how it relates with uh, the given parameters current and all whenever there is a current you have to take uh, from ohms law current i is equal to v by r v by the resistive part the resistive part in case of uh, uh, dc circuit will be resistance only even the inductor is the resistance of the inductor you have to take you have to take it as r okay and 20 volt supply is given 5 ampere current is drawn so uh, current is 5 ampere it is equal to 20 by r the resistance of the inductor from this we can calculate it as r is equal to 20 by 5 or 5 ohms 5 fours so r is equal to 4 ohm is the resistance of this then in the next part as for a given inductor it will have some in, uh, uh, inductance l and the resistance of that inductor is r so but when connected to dc supply the resistance will play an important role whereas when you connect it to ac supply the opposition factor will be called as a reactance part reactance part also comes into picture so in this, in this case i will be expressed as v by z in case of ac supply so here it is equal to uh, or you can write this implies this implies i is what 4 ampere is drawn when you connect it to ac source so ac voltage of 20 volts by z can be expressed as here you can write where z is z is square root of r square plus x l square x l square but again where xl is uh, uh, inductive reactance it is given as omega into l omega into l so omega r square plus omega l whole square you have to substitute in this so it is a square root of r value is anyway 4 so square root of 4 square plus omega l omega l whole square under root is this so now again if you can uh, uh, cancel and you can simplify this as 4 5, 5 is equal to this so square root of 4 square plus omega l whole square under root is 5 so if you square uh, on both sides we will get uh, we will get 25 so from this 4 square is 16 and hence we can write omega l whole square is equal to 25 minus 16 is 9 so omega l can be expressed as if you send the square on the right side it becomes root of root 9 is 3 so from this further you can simply what you want you want l so l is equal to 3 by omega omega is not given directly 
So what else are given? If you observe the frequency of the AC source is given as 50 hertz. F is given. So omega can you write in terms of F? S3 by 2 pi F. So this is equal to 3 by 2 into pi value is given in the question as 3. Actually 3.14 you can take but approximately you can take it as 3 into F is 50 hertz. So 3, 3 cancel. So it is 1 by 2 into 50 is 100. 1 by 100 is L. Uh, unit of uh, what is that inductance is Henry. 1 by 100 Henry. But if you observe again the question, the option, uh, question, uh, the answer uh, you are asked to find what is self inductance is equal to dash milli Henry in terms of milli Henry you want. So if you want in terms of milli Henry you have to write in uh, this final expression as 10 power hmm, minus 3 by 10 power minus 3 milli is 10 power minus 3 right then the value will not change. So one this 10 power minus 3 numerator you can uh, keep aside uh, keep with the Henry and you can write it as milli Henry. The denominator 10 power minus 3 if you bring it to numerator it becomes 10 power plus 3 that is 1000. So therefore you can write L is equal to 1000 1000 by 100 milli Henry. So here 100 100 gets cancelled. Yes. Then what will get? 1 0 remains it is equal to 10 milli henry so 10 how many milli henry 10 so this is your answer so the answer here is 10 right so this is how you have to do this kind of questions guys numerical based questions so don't think that these are je questions for neat preparation also these questions are useful these questions are useful so try to practice uh, anywhere if you are not able to uh, recollect back the conceptual part then you can go through the concept and the related formula then you can come and work out so you should remember the conceptual parts properly yes so you just uh, how you can ask how many how can i consider i is i equal to v by r here i equal to v by z and all these are simple basic conceptual parts so with practice you can understand just uh, how to take it as in two step process or three step process okay dc dc battery connected part is one part one part and ac ac source is another part so and you have to relate z with the square root of r square plus l xl square this and all you can understand with practice that's simple so i hope it is clear for you with uh, with this i'm winding now okay i hope everyone uh, got at least benefited to some extent so practice guys take care with this just uh, i would like to wind up